I'm going to build upon what we did in the last session to show its application through some case studies. And then we will go on to talking of management by objectives. As I was trying to explain to you, the most important part of uh, organization management is to be able to intervene in organizations to get them to be where you want them to be and the distance from where you are to where you want to be is the business of organization management. And so we looked at n number of uh, tools uh, through which this can be enabled and uh, these tools would uh, mean essentially intervening at the individual level, intervening at the interpersonal level, intervening at uh, the group level and we saw the mechanics of it. But ultimately as I was explaining to you, once you have intervened and caused a change in the equilibrium of forces, then you help the forces to settle down and that is called the process of stabilization of change. And then the cycle begins all over again and you go back to its analysis. So whenever you talk of an organization wide intervention, it is a large scale change effort that increases the effectiveness of an entire organizational system. And this is an eternal quest because no matter how good you are, most rational people and most people who can think straight want to keep on improving themselves. Of course, uh, if you have achieved nirvana, it is not meant for you. Nothing that I say is meant for the genius. It is all beamed at the normal mortal. And whatever I say is meant for the species which believes in improving itself. If you think you have achieved perfection, obviously you do not need anything of what is being said here. So the quest for improvement is the search for effectiveness. And that is what this statement is all about. Organization in wide intervention deals with issues of communication, job satisfaction, leadership and we discussed all that in the last session. I want to take up the case study of Granite Rock Company. Normally when a case study is uh, undertaken, it is customary to distribute it and let people read it. But uh, Letting people read and come back with solutions when they are half baked is not the correct way of undertaking case studies. It is asking people to diagnose a case without having understood the fundamentals of human uh, anatomy or fundamentals of human physiology. They will talk and if they are smart, they will talk smart, but they want to talk profession. They will, there will be hardly any content to it which makes sense in terms of a diagnostic analysis. Therefore, I decided to take up case studies with you not in the classical sense, but show to you how what we looked at in the last session gets actually applied. Now, the case of a granite rock company, which is what I am going to elaborate as an illustration of principles which we talked about, is that of a 105 year old company which was connected with construction material manufacturer and a supplier company. In 1987, competition changed. Large multinational conglomerates entered the market. Granite Rock was at disadvantage in terms of profit and resources. Again, I think you should go back to the preceding session and recall how we analyze the changes in environment which make changes in the person, how technological changes change the working of an organization and how indeed people who do not change do not even belong to the Jurassic Park because we discussed how Jurassic Park exists only in movies. There is no Jurassic Park on this planet. If you are outdated, you are extinct, you do not deserve to live. 
and life like nature is totally cruel about it. You can't argue with it. And if you think you can fool around nature, my invitation is try it, find out for yourself. So in 1987, this uh, company which had had several years, decades of experience behind it discovered that the world had once again changed. And therefore, the nature of resources have changed. And we had also discussed in the preceding session how change in material, how change in technology makes a choice of an intervention strategy a must and how you have to combine more than one intervention strategy to make it work. The idea is to see how it works for this company. The company realized that it had to change its strategy to survive and it conducted customer surveys to analyze its performance. For those of you who have uh, seen the preceding presentation will recall that we talked of how surveys are set up how survey results are analyzed and what it has to do with an organization wide, wide intervention. The results of survey proved that the customer were satisfied with the product quality and the customer service, but they were dissatisfied by the time taken to process special orders. Now we get deeper into the water. It is not good enough to do a survey because what you find from the survey may not be a holistic picture where you will need other intervention strategies. Even your results from the survey may be a fractured result. It will not be a black versus white result. Which is why again the outcome of any management education has to be by definition a certain maturity. Management wasn't meant for kids. And if, if kids get into management, they do to themselves what people do when they play with knives. Sooner or later, it will cause a gash. You may get away with it for a while, but as I said, the chicken do come home to roost. Now, what do you do in a case where certain aspects of the survey shows that the quality is all right, but the time for special orders does not work? You do not go back and argue with the customers. Because recall what I was trying to tell you, each customer votes with his rupee. People do not want to deal with you if you cannot deliver it on time. You may have the best of reasons. Who is interested in your reasons? Are you interested in anybody else's re reason when some service you want is not delivered on time? And why should anyone be patient with you when you do not deliver in time as a part of the organization? And if there is a takeaway from this session, it is habits do not change. People at a certain age believe that they behave in a certain manner at a given point of time, but when they get into another environment, they will change. It never happens. Their behavior may differ on one occasion, on two occasions. Ultimately, they will give, go back to the habits that have formed with them. Habit is the man. Now, in this case, with all the quality with them, with all the customer service systems in position, it was just late delivery which was going to cost them very heavy. So how did it go about dealing with these customers? To meet customers expectations, a company decided to empower the employees. Now again, this is a claptrap solution. It is like saying, if you want a system to work well, create democracy. The truth is democracy can create many more problems than it solves if people are not prepared for democracy. The difference between democracy and mobocracy is very limited when the people are not educated about it. The only truth about democracy is ultimately it gives to people what they deserve and that is, that is an unequivocal truth. So once you say empower people, what does it mean? The people whom you are empowering should have the capacity, first of all, to have good sense, which is a very rare commodity. 
two must have the capability three must have the commitment four must be capable of assessing and evaluating that's where transactional analysis comes in which is why a lot of people who do well in single domain professions like engineering law medicine don't do well in management because management is an integrative discipline it requires by definition the ability to put together diverse components above all it requires the ability to think on the job and thinking is not an isolated act thinking requires an inherent competence to observe to assess to structure to interpret and it is then that the domain knowledge comes in therefore the first important ability is comprehension now you can't comprehend unless you can concentrate and nobody can be taught concentration it has to come from within which is why people sleep while listening to something their mind is not able to comprehend what is being said and when the mind is not able to comprehend what is being said then the ability to register what is being said goes down and yet if you are compelled to be there your faculties start losing their energy and therefore sleep occurs management is therefore both an art and a science something which we have repeatedly come back to it is a science to the extent that there is some use of data but it is an art because it belongs only to those who can enjoy it people come to management for all sorts of wrong reasons and which is why this several of them never progress anywhere beyond being senior managers or deputy general managers even till the time of retirement you look at the profile of people who retire and you will find that three fourths of the population retires at the rank of a DGM or a general manager. Why does this happen? If the same person has gone had gone into engineering or any other single profession, even if he had become a merchant navy personnel, or if he had set up his own business, or he had joined the army, he would have done brilliantly. But people join management out of a herd mentality. That's where you are expected to do well. Now, unfortunately, capabilities don't grow like onions. So there is a lack of fit between what you are and what the job is about. And that causes disaster. If you do not have this ability to sense what the employee needs, I might submit to you as a paradigm that empowering them is not going to work. So don't go by claptrap statements. This has to be paraphrased and that is what case studies are about. But what the company can do as a whole is to make its objectives clear, which in this case they did. And one of the ways in which you make the objectives clear is you break it up into smaller components. So the organization broke up its objectives into nine discrete components. In other words, if you can't get the people to have the cognitive competency to comprehend the whole, then break up the whole into parts. Because that you are again dealing with a child, you are not dealing with an adult. And if you remember what I talked of in terms of transactional analysis, you will know exactly what is the difference between a child and an adult. 
individual professional development is again something which the com company enabled. Because you can give to a person an opportunity, you can't make it mandatory for him to grow. So the company decided that they would have an organization-wide individual professional development plan. Which is why the prerequisite of every good organization is careful recruitment. The trouble, however, is there was again something which uh, a gentleman remarked yesterday, which I think is worth quoting. As usual, I was emphasizing the need for competency and the need for commitment and the need for capability. And I was told, sir, what makes you think? and I'm putting it in my words, that companies know whom they recruit. You can easily get 24, 25, 30,000 rupees without having any competency, and you cruise along perfectly well. And it again struck me as a fairly incisive observation on how inept the recruitment processes of a lot of companies are. Now, if you have got inept people getting into inept organizations through inept recruitment processes, is it any surprise that the number of companies which fail are so much larger than the number of companies which succeed? The message is written on the wall. Or worse, you look at the rate of attrition. People talk of recruits which leave. Nobody has ever calculated about the number of recruits which are gently and firmly shown the door. The message is given very clear. Sorry, we made a, made a mistake somewhere. You shouldn't be here. Look elsewhere. All that I'm saying is, Granite Rock Company took an overall view of the situation and encouraged people to participate in the decision making processes. It did not make it mandatory. So the important word here is encouraged. Therefore, the first leg was individual professional development, job performance, career advancement goals, identifying training expertise necessary to achieve these goals. The final IPDP list included development objectives of employees, actions which are to be taken and measurement strategies. I would like to emphasize the word measurement. Any enhancement of capability has to be measured. And there are instruments which help you to do it. There are instruments which even help you to measure your competency at ideation. They're not perfect instruments. You don't get 100% reliable results, but it's a fairly good approximation. And therefore, a lot of training programs have pre-tests and post-tests. The pre-tests assesses your competency before you undergo that program, and the post-test assesses your competency after you have gone through this program. And the great thing about the Granite Rock Company, because it was a turnaround experience, was that it believed in measurement of enhancement of capabilities. The measurement strategy, therefore, required clear time frame. You cannot be forever saying, I will do it when I can, uh, when it suits me, and when, as if. Sorry. You have to do it in a time-bound mode, in a manner in which you have been advised, with the specifications that is required of you. And if you can't do it, pack up and leave. There are many reasons for American success, like every other com community. Americans also have their problems, but one of their successes is they do not hire people, they hire competencies. And so long as you serve a purpose in the organization, you are there. You don't serve a purpose in the organization, you are fired. And that's all there is to it. None of this business is poor fellow, he will die, he has nothing to do, where will he go? Send him to a goshala.
there is a quip everyone wants to go to heaven but no one wants to die similarly every, every everyone envies america they are not willing to pay the price which the americans pay for their kind of results and it's not for nothing that in a unipolar world the nature of the world economy is decided by the kind of uh, economic fortunes which the uh, american nation goes through i'm merely trying to link up economic fortunes with productivity indices and measurements of performance it's not that america is the only place where it happens but you don't run organizations like goshalas you must have a clear demonstration of new knowledge and skills because if the environment is changing so should you be changing and in organizations where i have been hired to do the performance appraisal perform i have always created a column which says what are the new skills you have acquired during the period of evaluation and it cannot be the answer that my superior didn't tell me what skills to get your superior is a reporting authority and there was a time when people believed that developing subordinates was a major managerial responsibility now that has been redefined you can't develop a subordinate against his wishes you will only cause resentment the most you can do is give your subordinates an opportunity to grow growth is always a person's personal responsibility and granite rock company was able to bring about a turnabout by following just sim this simple principle now where do you put it in managerial grade or transactional analysis or any of the other intervention strategies i don't know because ultimately life doesn't have any neat categories and that's what this case is supposed to show so ultimately that there is a process of evaluation and feedback we also talked of the involvement of employees in the decision making process people have a responsibility to understand that participation in a patronization process or participation in a decision making process is not a single act it carries with it certain degree of accountability in other words are you responsible enough to be given that opportunity is a very important question please mark my words are you responsible enough to be given that opportunity and we are now not referring to capability because enough has been said on that not only did they pay emphasis on the human aspect but plant expansion was undertaken now this is a fairly unusual solution in time of distress you you decide to expand it's a very useful thing because in time of distress the overall demand goes down and when the overall demand goes down there is slack time and that slack time should be used either for augmenting skills or for augmenting facilities so there was a new design there was a there was focus on ergonomics of the new plant therefore it caused a system and cultural change now that is the derivation from that case analysis when a company engages in a successful organization wide od development change occurs both in organization systems and culture
and we have spent enough time discussing both systems and culture earlier on not to make it a repeat experience here. Organizations develop new strategies for utilization of resources more effic efficiently, particularly the human resources. Ten years later, what happened? The market share increased by 88 percent. Customer in satisfaction increased twice the industry standards. That's the way to be a market leader. If you are merely conforming to the industry standards, you are average. And to be successful, you have to be more than average. This is something which is not understood about the business of standards. Everyone talks of standards, but it is my case that standards themselves create mediocrity. You have to excel the standards to get business. Reaching standards alone will merely help you to keep afloat, if at all that. And that is a different take on standards. How do you nurture a system? Through continuous survey feedback method. There is a customer satisfaction index, there is the employee satisfaction index. In fact, there are indices available on just about anything you would like to measure. I remember having spent some time in developing an index to assess employees maturity, maturity index. And different people have defined maturity in a different manner. Like everything else, I define maturity in a very simple manner. Maturity is the ability to know by yourself what is good for you. And if you are the one who ca gets carried away, or you are the one who is slothful, or you are the one who does not even know the consequences of what you are doing, then of course you deserve what will come your way. Then there is the system for management, there is a grid management development system, there is the TQM. I am not going to discuss TQM because this has already been discussed. I am not going to discuss grid management development because this has already been discussed, but I shall be taking up another case and I shall be referring to these other components including Renesis like art system to the extent that they take the discussion forward. Survey feedback system has been discussed. Therefore, we shall now move on to the system for management. The contribution of this is remitted to Renesis Likert. In fact, there is what is called the Renesis Likert scale, the Likert scale. They found that managers who are concerned primarily with schedules, close supervision and production goals are less effective than managers who use a more participative style as they develop healthy relationship with employees while pursuing organizational goals. Now, Renesis Likert did his research a long time ago. The management knowledge which has then surfaced has established a very simple principle. And the principle is, You have to create a system, design a system as per the level of employees which you have. Participative style does not work everywhere. Therefore, it is the first responsibility of management to assess the professional index of its people. Because if you encourage participation beyond the professional index, you are likely to cause trouble. After the common game th games were held, reports came that people in responsible positions were seen 
picking up flower pots and keeping it the keeping them in the dicky of their car does that need a comment obviously the worth the the person is worth some lakhs otherwise he won't have a car and what is he stealing 200 rupees worth of flower pot if he won that what does he show his class now, for a community of this order, I refuse to buy the slogan, encourage participation, you will get better results. One of the problems of management decision making is, it is full of claptrap slogans. Which is why, if you are in a leadership role, learn to know the type of people you are dealing with. And only the system which integrates with the typology of people that you are dealing with works. You give too much, you are in trouble. You give too little, people will crib. But then they will crib anyhow. A leader should have the competency of doing what is good for the organization irrespective. And make it quite clear. If it's good enough for you, you are welcome to stay back. We'll take care of you. But if it's not good enough for you, good luck. Wish you all the best. There are two qualities which are very important in a professional. The ability to create a relationship where it's required. And equally important, the ability to terminate a relationship where it becomes necessary. Anyone who has crossed 15, 16, if he's a normal or she's a normal person, would have experienced several attractions or repulsions. And as you go through life, you are attracted towards people who reject you. You reject people who you really should have appreciated. Because they are the ones who really had their had your good in in, in the uh, in their heart, and by the time you want to go back to them, the relationship is over. They won't accept you back. But at the end of the day, because there is a heartbreak, nobody stops falling in love the next time. Because there is there is always this lurking hope. It will be better luck next time. That better luck never comes. <laughs> it only varies from 2 minutes to 2 hours to 2 days to 2 weeks to 2 months to 2 years, sometimes 20 years. But it is like mirror, it does break. Which is why you celebrate the few mythical stories of eternal love. You would not celebrate what you were experiencing, would you? Remember, fantasy is a very important quality to stay alive. If you did not fantasize, life can be brutal. If you did not believe in your mythical powers. You see, I, I can give a very simple example. Everyone lies. Why do you lie? And as I have explained earlier, you lie because you think you are smarter than the next man. Now, by what law of averages? Can a group of 100 have a person who is smarter than everyone else? Yet everyone will lie. I am explaining this by way of a repetition to underscore a very simple principle. Fantasy is a very important ingredient of human life. People fantasize all the time, especially about their powers. Oh, you look at me, the great me. Wow. You do not know whether to read a book from front to back or back to front. You get a Urdu book, you open the front page. You get a Hindi book, you start reading it from the back. Because you do not know the difference between Hindi and Urdu. But you are quite determined, you are the smartest of them all. When you are dealing with that kind of a crowd, a leader must have the ability to design a system which meets the mental level of the crowd you are dealing with. Renaissance like art 
committed the error, notwithstanding his contributions, and I will be sharing his contributions to you shortly, of again wanting to talk pretty. You know, th there is something wonderful of talking about, you know, participative style, empowerment, divesting of responsibility. The latest phrase is bottom of the pyramid. Now, they are all looking at the bottom of the pyramid. When I, when I went to Cairo, I uh, went next to a py pyramid. So, my guide said, sir, what is it that I want? I put, tried to put my hands between it. He said, sir, what is it that you want? I said, I want to look at the bottom of the pyramid. <laughs> so, he laughed and he laughed and he laughed. He said, you can't raise it. I said, all the management gurus are now wanting to look at the bottom of the pyramid. So, he said, oh, you are a management man, are you? And he looked at me with the sort of contempt which only management people can evoke. <laughs> there are institutions where they do not give membership to a person who comes from the field of management. You are an artist, you are welcome. You are a dancer, you are welcome. You are a singer, you are a welcome. You are a writer, you are a welcome. You are a management man, Jai Ram Ji ki. Bagal wale mein chale ja. Utho baitho. Now, why do you find it necessary to break into Punjabi? Because that is the only language which I believe brings reality to the fore, as nothing else does. Ba, go, go there, not here. This is meant for normal human beings. You are a management man. Therefore, if you compare the fate of management in 2010 post period to fate of management, it was as it was in 1990, there is a whole world of difference. Today, if you survey management schools, you will find any number of seats which have not been filled. Because people have realized that getting a management degree is not a substitute for competency. And all professions have their crests and troughs. All that I am trying to say is, if you want to be a true management man, and management is a noble discipline, learn to formulate things realistically and not in a fantasy mode. It does not work. However, to get back to Renaissance like art, here is his typology of managerial styles. He talked of operating characteristics, exploitative or authoritative characteristics, benevolent authoritative characteristics, consultative style and the participative style. In other words, suppose you were to reduce what Renaissance like art said to five styles. Operating characteristics are listed here, the styles are listed here, and then in each case, you have got the various permutations and combinations. For example, for operating characteristics, if you want to look at motivation, how does a person who is exploitative and authoritative function? He will use fears, threats, punishment, occasional rewards. That is how he will want to motivate. If he is benevolent and authoritative, how will he motivate? Through rewards, some actual or potential punishment. Consultative, rewards, occasional punishment and some involvement. How does a participative style work where, where motivations are concerned? Economic rewards on the system developed through participation. Now, if you look at the dimension of information flow, an exploitative authoritative person believes in information flow downwards. A benevolent and authoritative person also believes in downwards, but not always, mostly. A consultative person believes in information flow both down and up. And a participative person believes in information flow down, up and horizontal. Decision making. So, this chart is so self-evident, after having helped you to see how to read it, I want to leave this on the screen for 
a while so that you can read it and understand it to yourself because it's such a waste of time first to show a thing then to read it out again then to ex read it read it as if you are trying to explain it as if you are talking to a bunch of uh, people who can't understand maybe that's true but at least you don't tell your audience you don't understand so it is best to treat people as if they understand and i leave you leave it the leave the rest to you to read and understand and of course if you can't you can always write back and ask yeah i didn't understand what you meant by decision making for an exploitative and authoritative person then you will get the answer oh it means bulk of decision is at the top of the organization this will be repeated it's ah now i understand that is what frequently asked questions are all about it was all there to begin with but because you were sleeping or you are so used to mummy's kheer you want to be spoon fed or wife's kheer depending upon what point of life you are in you want to be explained that over and over again so you are welcome jokes apart the truth is this is a, this is a typology which i haven't developed myself this is straight from renesis like art and it is best to hear renesis like art from renesis like art you don't have to hear him through vinayshil gautam because that always causes a refraction and refraction is not the best way of communication so from the chart the question arises how the system for management is adopted in the beginning the organization's current management style is assessed using a survey instrument called the profile of organizational characteristics during the second phase organizational members receive feedback on the survey results and begin action planning activities some examples of system for management implementation again if you recall the preceding session for each intervention strategy i was at pains to explain to you the application go back to it you will be able to comprehend what is being explained here in terms of uh, application and implementation of uh, system 4 harwood weldon incorporated a manufacturer of sleepwear two general motors plant at doraville and lakewood the system requires time to implement and even more time before improve, improvement in productivity and efficiency can be documented in other words no intervention can undo the natural process you can speed it up a little bit but what time it takes it will take best understood by another expression which i am very happy to use to explain a point you can't run faster than the train you are on applies to principle you can't get a people to perform better than they are capable of you can't motivate a person who who is basically demotivated so the same thing applies to for the system for management implementation things take their time in fact best interventions work on together with the time they work with the system they don't try to beat the system the case of two gm plants at doraville and Cackwood implementing the profile of organizational characteristics showed Doraville close to system four and Lakewood syst close to system two. Now you have to go back to the Renesis like art to recall what is system four and system two. GM decided to move. shorters manager at doraville to lakewood to implement system 4 in other words he took a conscious decision that he was going to move it from exploitative authoritative to participative the reverse could have been taken just as well i'm going to move back from participative to exploitative authoritative or i'm going to move from participative to consultative in this case he decided to move from exploitative to participative <coughs>
solidified the Lakewood management team behind a system four approach that encouraged innovative thinking about management employee relationships. Staff and supervisors received training on increasing mutual understanding, trust and teamwork. Go back to the Joe Harry window, this will be clear to you. Remember, revealing yourself, getting the other person to reveal himself, which is the, the block which has which is what which was called arena it was not blind and i i, I don't want to repeat the joe harry windows uh, philosophy again this is an open relationship where you reveal yourself you help others to reveal themselves staff and supervisors receive training on increasing mutual understanding trust and teamwork this is great if it works the trouble is it doesn't always work and that is where the problem begins. Staff and supervisors received receive training in this and in this case it did work. Workers were kept informed on future products, facility changes, selected cost data, management provided them with regular data on how labor costs compared with regular GM plants. In other words, the principle which was used in this case was very simple take your stakeholders into confidence. Because let me tell you, in the ultimate analysis, you have no choice but to trust people. Like a lot of things in life, trust is a no choice situation. And it is amazing how you have to put in exceptionally large extent of trust in people whom you have never met and you will never meet. Like your engine train driver. You don't know whether he is drunk. You don't know whether he has got his license through contacts or genuinely, but you place his life, uh, your life at his disposal. The interesting thing about human nature is you distrust the people that you know. And you trust the people that you do not know. Not because you are great or you are very sensible, but because you do not have a choice. So, what do you do? If there are 1200 people riding a train, each one does not go to the engine driver and says, pass, pass through a breath test, prove to me that you are not drunk. No, you, 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 you do not function that way where, where the issues of scale are concerned. But Learn as you grow up as a manager to reconcile the contradictory behavior of human nature. If I were to ask somebody for 100 rupees, he will think three times. Will he give it back? Won't he give it back? Can I trust him? Can I not trust him? What excuse should I make? No, you see, sir, I do not carry my wallet. I can see it bulging, but you know, he does not carry his wallet. Oh, you see, sir, I have actually 40 rupees. I just spend the 60 rupees. For 100 rupees, the fellow will pull three fast ones and will happily sit in a train without knowing even the name of the engine driver. Who said man is a logical animal? Most of the things which he does cannot be explained at any level, let alone reason. It cannot be explained even at the level of emotion. There is no emotion involved in trusting an unknown person, yet you trust an unknown person. For those of you who are sitting beneath a roof, each building carries a completion certificate. And in a country where corruption is such a fine art and so much time is spent discussing corruption, how do you know how, how that fellow got the completion certificate? But does anyone think of it while entering a room? Oh, how was the ceiling of this room certified as safe? Was he corrupt? Did he know X? Did he know Y? You do not do it. You will go mad if you work that way. And yet, you will have all sorts of anxieties about your brother, your father, your wife. Who is she going around with? Who is my husband going around? Baba, if they, they are going around, you will not be able to prevent it. But never mind, you will drive yourself bonkers. What am I saying? 
the world belongs to the people who are well formed. You can't help people get over their anxieties which they want to nurse. And everyone pretends to be well formed. The truth is everyone has a deep psychological problem. The most normal thing is abnormality of everyone. When you put together a group like this in an organization, to be a leader, you have to understand how to deal with people differently. So all the four systems of Renaissance like art are useful depending upon who you are dealing with and what kind of group do you have at hand. But the principle remains, trust others and you will find that it moves. Workers were given detailed information about upcoming changes to prepare for new models of production. Workers participated in planning changes. Workers even ad ad advised engineers on redesigning of their work area. Lakewood made significant progress, but changes were gradual. There were some bottlenecks. The effort to retain management and workers was costly. Well, nothing in life is cheap. Of course, with the exception of cheap talk. If you want quality, you pay for it. It takes time for improved management practices to be adopted and implemented by managers and additional time is needed to build trust and attitude that translate into improved performance. We shall carry this forward shortly.